beginning to see a pattern. We've stacked the show full of Cork people today. Did you notice that on, on the anniversary of Saipan? Sarah Donovan, good morning to you. How are you? I'm delighted that you're talking about Roy again. You can never talk about Roy enough. So you're obviously Team Roy. Since the age of eight. Massive United fan. And uh, what's your recollection of the whole shit show? I remember Roy being right then. Didn't like Mick after that. And I'm going to stand by it now. Sure, look. I'm in. <laughs> you, can't, you can't not trust the feelings you had as a child. Like, <laughs> Look, I just remember his, his outrage and, and his upset. And, and that stayed with me then. And I said, well, he was right. They didn't have footballs. What were they supposed to do? And was, there, was this um, a, a formative moment in your own like sports following career? Well, never trust a manager. Like, Well, you know. I'm... Essentially, it's always player led. I've decided that now it's has been to my detriment at times, you know, where you probably should trust the manager. I know Taggy was on yesterday talking about uh, managers ruling with an iron fist. And I was saying, oh, Jesus, I wouldn't be good in that dressing room. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seemed to work OK for that group of Kilkenny players, uh, which brings us nicely to Kieran Kingston and the, the Cork management setup, who are now the best management setup in the country, apparently, over the last couple of weeks. What's changed before we get into... Um, what should happen and what's likely to happen. I think we were talking about them being more direct. And I think the players are trusting each other more as well. I'm of the opinion that this is player-led. I was going to say that, obviously, based on everything I've just said before. But I just feel like the players are actually trusting each other more and they're demanding more of each other. So even the last day late on in the game, right, Cork are winning it by a cricket score. And Seamus Harnady goes to give a ball to Dara Fitz. Dara Fitz doesn't move into the right pocket. Seamus Harnady had an option. He was going to score. He obviously chose to go with Dara the ball gets turned over and Seamus' reaction to Dara, he was really pissed off at him. Like He just really wanted him to be in the right position. And I suppose I hadn't seen that before from the Cork setup, where they were demanding more of each other and they're 12 points up. They're, they're cranky. But in a really good way. cranky, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a great way to play because you get so much more out of your team. Are you um, taking some of the credit for the crankiness given <laughs> that you were like one of the leading voices going, this shower, they're not trying a leg, what's going on? Work great, work great, work great. You know, Conor Lee Han is the epitome of work great and he scores six points again the last day in the first half. As I said last week, he's like Lazarus. You know, every game he's getting better and better. And I wonder, is that because it was being taken away from him? You know, and look, you look at Tim O'Mahony, goal merchant, scores a class goal again the last day. He just loves to run forward. He's so direct. Like They've changed three or four things and they've been huge, huge in the last three weeks. Are you giving the management team no credit for that? Look, they've obviously been listening to the pundits the management aren't, you know, naive. They're being offered opportunities to change and they have the players who are there to change and the players are versatile, they're flexible, but the players are also incredibly skillful. So well, the management can adapt and I, they have. I'm, I'm, I'm always in two minds about this, where like um, the performances that we've seen from Seamus Harnady this year are better than we've ever seen, I would say. Like, it, it certainly feels like at, is he 29? He's fulfilling all of the potential that we thought was there. Conor Lee Han has come back. Like, it was weird seeing the scoring. It was Lehan and Harnady. I was like, hang on a second. What, is, what year is this? 2013, because that's it, what, what it feels like. Yeah. You know, um, and... Uh, I, I, I don't know, it feels like Kingston is actually a player's manager in that he he's not... He doesn't have an iron, certainly from the outside. It doesn't feel like yeah. he is running with an iron fist. He's not Brian Cody. No. And um, whatever changes have been made... Maybe they were made in consultation with the players or not, but there's there's a humility from a manager to allow that to happen. Um, and I agree with you on that. I think the players aren't, they don't play with fear because some of the things they were trying to do in the second half the last day, if they were playing with fear, they wouldn't be trying those things. You know, they were still overplaying the ball. Um, and, I, and I don't think they feel like they're going to be punished for that. So there is a nice, I suppose, serendipity between the players and the management and, and, and it does feel like they do listen to each other so that is that is a positive in, in this year's campaign and the other thing about the, the round robin sorry the other thing about the round robin is that like um, you know previously before the round robin when the back door was there we have seen teams get absolutely annihilated in Munster and then go on through the back door and have a great run you think of uh, Isaki's hat trick I was like oh this is amazing but then like that wasn't it didn't actually lead to anything uh, although um, like Tip have a couple of times been absolutely annihilated is that now in this Cork team psyche that like not being in the Munster final is frequently the best way for you to go if you can keep that sense of confidence building you, you know you train there's a nice handy match for you in the middle of it and you arrive absolutely ready in a quarter final against a team who's just coming off a beaten. I wonder in any other year would that be relevant, but with Limerick looming for everybody, 
it just feels like you can go so far. So this Cork team getting as much out of themselves as they can, but ultimately, if you want to win the All-Ireland, you have to face Limerick. And for everyone, that's the case. Yeah. Uh, would you rather face them in a final or would you rather face them in a situation where they've been beaten by Clare in the Munster final? I cannot tell you the level of depression. Actually, I can because you had me on the following morning last year. <laughs> I barely got out of bed. An All-Ireland final is not the place to meet Limerick for this Cork team. I think they have to do it in a slightly less imposing, less pressure environment. And I would rather do it in a semi-final, I think. It's and time not to get, yeah, the semi-final rather than losing against Clare. The, the time off that Limerick would have before an All-Ireland semi-final would be probably where they'd be at their most vulnerable. I think so. I think, I think so, because like, if they lose to Clare... Like, They've I, just I, been pretty good at it over the last number of years. Yeah. I get, well, the only thing is that they did get caught in a semi-final one year they did get caught. I mean, it should have gone to extra time. It should have been, there should have been a free, they should have equalised, they should have gone to extra time. Six they probably five, would have yeah. been, yeah. I just think that I would rather, based on the experience of Cork last year, to do it earlier in the campaign, to, to meet yeah. Limerick earlier in the campaign. I just don't think this Cork team is built for another All-Ireland final like that. And the pressure that was put on them last year. Okay, so uh, you are still obviously uh, damaged by last year's All-Ireland final and we have to assume that the Cork psyche is at the moment. But is there not, is there something happening over the last couple of weeks that makes you think, okay, hang on a second? We're still missing a wing back. There was just a couple of moments the last day where despite Cork's, you know, dominance, there was a there was space. Tipperary opened a cup, up a couple of uh, a couple of times, and I just went, "Oh, it's like why isn't he going there? Why isn't he? Why doesn't he see the danger?" They weren't reading the danger the last day, and against better teams, against Galway, against Limerick, I think Cork will be opened up much faster. We went one three to no score down. I actually thought that Patrick Collins had saved the penalty from my vantage point in the stand. I think a lot of people did. Yeah, but, yeah. and I, that would have put them seven clear. So. It was, it's just that sense of naivety. They're like, oh, we we love to hurl, but we don't necessarily You'd love to have seen what would have happened if the penalty had gone in, right? 100%. I mean, we would say we would have certainly as uh, as neutrals, just to see if they could have come back from that because the performance subsequently was really spectacular and it comes off the back of a really good performance as well. So, uh, you know, um, the 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 where's the confidence? Where where are this team? If you were to power rank, you obviously have, you clearly have Limerick first. Uh, you mentioned Galway there. Uh, would Clare also be at Galway's level at the moment? Or? I, I think so. I, I think Limerick, Clare, Galway. And then you're looking at Cork. I think Kilkenny to lose at home to Wexford. You know, that was Suddenly the first time Wexford had us, ever yeah. won in Nolan Park. They've lost twice. They're still in the Leinster final. Their scoring threat isn't the same. I think they only scored th- three points from play the last day. Just not motoring the same way as Galway and then Galway had to bring on Johnny Cohn Evan Nyland Jason Flynn much more in terms of an attacking presence than Kilkenny have Can, can I just ask just on uh, Cork and Fear uh, you said that they're playing without Fear at the moment could you not make a case that playing through the lines at the start is actually emblematic of not playing with Fear because they're not afraid of getting turned over in their own half they're not afraid of, of making an error and in actual fact it is that fear of uh, screwing up in their own half that has actually driven them to play a more direct style of hurling over the last few weeks? That's a very tough question, actually. Um, I, I genuinely felt like they understood each other better as a group the last two games. And they were trusting in Alan Connolly. You know, the the players themselves were going, oh, hang on a second, this guy can motor, so let's give him the ball. Like, let's give Hoggy the ball. Let's give um, Dara Fitz the ball. Uh, Robbie Flynn, like they're looking for each other they're looking to play and, and the player in the best position was getting the ball rather than keeping to a strict let's play through the lines so I would say moving away from that idea of having to play through the lines shows them playing without fear uh, So what's the ceiling? The ceiling is being beaten by Limerick whenever they come up against them at the moment but yeah. giving them a much better game than last year They're still missing a wing back like I there's just a couple of areas that they don't have ready yet um, I, they really need a, 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 another wing back. Mark Coleman's fine, Joyce is fine. That third, that third wing back position is is key, and, and that's so that's, that's going to stop them. That's going to stop them. But that's progress from last year. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they should be further down the track with this management team, and that's why I'm a little disappointed. It, it, is the reality potentially here that? we now have a top two in Munster and that Clare and Limerick are ahead of the pack. Obviously, Limerick on their own, Clare in second on their own. And, and that's actually just what happened to Cork in the first couple of weeks. I'd agree. I was at the 
Clare game, I thought that Clare were far more tactically astute than Cork and I wonder how Cork are going to bridge that gap, you know, if they do have to meet them um, in, in the next couple of weeks. So I do think that Brian Lone and John Kiley have a better setup and being player led in Cork can only take you so far. You need a management team to be able to plug in as well. Okay. Um what what is there anything that this current management team can do that would allay your fears or do you feel like this is as far as they can take them? This management team can only take them this far. Okay. But they are going to have to look for three or four. And more so but uh, so I look I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe, there are, maybe those players do exist and they're they're not currently with the setup at the moment, but maybe this is just the playing stock that's available. This is the playing stock that's available, but if you look at the minor and under twenty one teams that or under twenty teams that came through in the last two years for Cork, big wins in the All Irelands, the players will be there, but they need time to bet in. I just don't think this current management team are the team to take them there. Okay, so from your perspective, almost irrespective of what happens, unless obviously they win in All Ireland, it's it, that's it's still building, lads. Uh, and how how patient are the Cork hurling fans at the moment? Because you were pretty impatient earlier in the year. Is the patience coming back a little bit? No, I'm no. Look, I'm looking at it from the point of view of Seamus Harnady and Conor Lehan, possibly, you know, their last or second last years, and we're going to have to find new players to replace those players again. We're kind of running out of time because we have Hoggy, Harnady, Lehan. These players have a lifespan, and how quickly can we get those new players in? If you look at Tip, Tip without the Mahers, without um, Seamus Callanan really, really struggled this year. You can't replace that experience in a dressing room. Could, could you make the case that the difference there is that those Tip players have proven? that they can get over the line in All-Ireland and those Cork players have never proven it regardless of the management that they've had. I agree. I think 2019 though was kind of a special year for Tip um, against the run of play. They won that All-Ireland. So that group of players, no, I, I you're right. That group of players in, in terms of what they've achieved um, is unrivaled. That that particular Tip team, massive experience and that's why, why it hasn't been replaced. Because my kind of, uh, thought maybe last year, especially after Limerick hockeyed Cork in the final, was that actually this crop of Cork players maybe just won't get over the line and it is as you mentioned the minor and under 20 teams it's about the current crop ushering them through and if they manage to win in All-Ireland out of nowhere unbelievable but in reality it actually is the next generation that can say to themselves well we've beaten Limerick at underage level we've won these championships at underage level we know how to win whereas these current Cork seniors that are at the in the twilight of their careers just just can't say that that, that it is about the future. It has to be about the future. I know that Taggy was talking about uh, Tip and catching them in the five in a row. You know, that those the Tip team have done it, whereas this Cork team have had ample opportunities 2013, 2018, and they've always been the second best side. They've been the runner-up and, you know, bridesmaids for their entire careers. Clare's catapult into that same tier, I think, is down to the personnel that's available to them. But I, if, if Clare and Cork met three weeks in a row over the next three weeks I'd say it's 50-50 at this stage given the form that the Cork are in at the moment It was a two point the, game when they played a few weeks ago like it wasn't a, a and hammer. I do think something's turned around in, in two Cork Two late goals well. for Cork though let's, well, like, yeah, uh, let's be honest but if you look at what Clare did the last day against Limerick they you know six players brought in Brian Lowen said lads there's their game or this place is here up for grabs let's go for it and those six players came in and went hell for leather Cork wouldn't have that depth to have to be able to change six different players and then expect them to go toe to toe. No, and it's interesting that Lehan has come back in and is performing at the level he's at. So look, I, it's going to be interesting. There are some big games ahead. Where do you think is going to be the end of the, the road for this Cork team at the moment? If they meet Galway, okay. I think I think Galway will be too physical and also have the firepower up front. And after the weekend, so it sounds like you think Galway are going to win Leinster. I do based on what I saw the last uh, weekend between Wexford and Kilkenny I just think they look a little tired It's going to be interesting to see the handshake and, um, <laughs> and the, the level of obsession that Cody has over the next couple of weeks for winning that game and then uh, who's going to win Munster? Limerick Will it be close? I think it'll be six points I, I, I think Limerick are very they're They've had a, a lot of time over the last four weeks to look at how Clare play and Clare have showed them a lot about, about the way they play. 